We're going to start with Bob Burns' presentation. Bob was one of the original Amiga engineers out of California, helped build the system. Uh, I overheard a conversation between him and Steve that Bob's code is still running in uh, Amiga OS 4 today. Uh, it looks like he's brought some artifacts for a little bit of a show and tell. So we're going to start that presentation right now. If you want to talk to, to Bob, uh, come on into the main auditorium. Thank you. Okay, Bob, go. Uh, so, so I should have brought the long sleeve shirt to wear into this. So, so uh, a couple points. One is, if you've heard Amiga presentations before, it's probably been by someone who has done Amiga presentations before. And to my knowledge, I have never done one. And so, I was watching this video last night, and there was a smooth and polished story about Mitchie helping to design the chipset, which is, of course, totally not true. Jumping in and out, is that because my battery is dying? Or? Uh, no. But it's a great story. And you get that when you, when you present a story again and again, and you find out what works and what doesn't. And so we're going to have some things today here that don't work. And, and please bear with me on that. So I'm uh, to work for Hewlett Packard. And one of the people that I worked with was Dale Luck, whose picture is shining right here, and that's my shiny picture right there. And we wrote an article about what we did in the Hill Packard Journal, because that's what you do back in those days, is, is Hill Packard was an engineer's company we were talking about, and a uh, great company to work for. Uh, Dale uh, and I then went into different groups but we both worked on this same holographic terminal. I went to go work on the application side that, that had a painting program for it, and I wrote a tablet driver for it. And he stayed in another group and pretty much did a Skunkworks Unix port to this thing, because what was it? Was it was a 68,000 processor-based thing that had uh, the capability to run hard drives over uh, IEEE, whatever HPIB is. And, uh, and so he brought up this Unix machine, this Unix uh, machine, and, and was showing it off to people, and it's like, wow, okay, we've got a color sun one here, effectively. And uh, of course, that goes up the management food chain as to what this guy's doing, and it comes back down, it's like, no, uh, Hewlett Packard's workstations are done in Greeley, Colorado. They're not done in Sunnyvale, California. Um, stop doing that. Because you're you're showing this up, you know. So it's, it's, and so um, he so he, he left. He went to go work for a tire company, and so that was in uh, the summer of, of, of 1983. And I, I went on to work for a. Uh, a they had a, a touch screen computer that was MS DOS. Not IBM compatible at this small. Um, and I wrote a touch, uh, touch screen calculator application on that. And, and, I, and I want you to remind me of that when I talk about if I talk about Germany, I want you to, rem to remind me that I want to get back to this touch screen uh, 12C calculator on this. Um, and I get a call from a headhunter and he says, I've got this exciting opportunity to do graphics. Uh, I said, oh. This sounds familiar. What, what company is this? It's like, you haven't heard of it, it's Amiga. It's like, oh, my friend, I, I know about Amiga. And so then I turn around and I call up Dale and I say, uh, you didn't say you were hiring. And he says, well, you know, it, it, it's, you leave a company, it's, it used to be at least, um, appropriate in industry not to go turn around and headhunt all your friends back in. And uh, I said, yeah, we are. So I um, went over, interviewed. Uh, saw the beginnings of the whiteboard. The, the whiteboard changed many times. I don't know if you saw the movie last night. There were several pictures of it. Um, it. It got modified to be better and better. And finally it was, you know, we should save this. And so spray lacquer, it was no longer a whiteboard. It was now the thing to be saved for posterity's sake. Uh, so I saw that, uh, saw what they're working on. And this looked like it was going to be fun. I joined the team. So Dale 
Michael and I at Hewlett Packard had kind of divvied up the responsibilities for the graphics subsystem on this thing that we were working on, and, and he did the, the line drawing, the, all the graphics intensive stuff, and I did the kind of peripheral stuff, um, the text rendering, and the interface library for it um, that was exposed to people that were running mainframe applications that wanted to, to do these operations. And, and so we kind of naturally fell into that, you know, he'd already taken the big, carved out the big graphics thing, and so I was kind of like his adjunct. Uh, and, and so we had, that. we had this room that was, um, well, you've seen pictures of it. I don't know if you get a sense for how big it is. From about that light to that corner, crammed with desk, 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 desk. Um, I had the desk over in the far corner the door is here, and uh, I'm unusual. I like light. And so the, uh, hanging over my desk is a globe light with an incandescent bulb in it, okay? And, and that's the light in the room because everybody else likes dark, okay? And so, so they all liked working in the dark. Um, it, so the, I, I told you last night the story about Sam Dicker with the blanket over his head. You know, it, it's like... That wasn't just to keep the light out, that was to keep it. Um, so in this room we had Bob Perso who sat at the door, he's, he's here. And so he hired me, Bob Burns. Um, he hired Bob Michael. Um, all his family calls him Bob. Um, he hired Bob Peck, a published author. If you look up Bob Peck for old uh, you know, manuals, you'll find him because he's an author of, of, you know, from the late 70s, early 80s. And to the other three Bobs, he said, what's well, your name? is not Bob. Because I'm Bob. Right? Okay, and we've got a small room, and when somebody says Bob, we don't want everybody going, because that'd be half the room, literally. Okay, so uh, in college, I went to high school in Anchorage, Alaska, and so college, everybody that's in the basement of the computer sticker gets a nickname, and so you don't, you don't choose your own nickname, and I had been given the nickname Kodiak, and at the time, I was, and I apologize, okay, I was skinnier than you and had the facial hair that you have, okay, and I'm pointing to a guy who, who, is, who, who looks tall and skinny, but, but no facial hair, and so I was given the name Kodiak because I'd come from Alaska, even though I've never been to Kodiak, huh? and I have to tell you, names can define you because I have grown into the role, okay? Yeah, don't you think now I look a little bit more like a Kodiak? So, um, so actually I had the beard, it just wasn't, it wasn't, yeah, yeah, but this, this is, yeah. No, I did have the beard, okay, I lied about that. But I was tall and skinny, believe me once. Okay, so now we're rolling. We've got um, this room full of people, we're all working on this, this uh, computer, um, I joined in October, I think it is, of 83. We're getting ready for the CES show with the grand uh, chip uh, stack. Um, and, and yes, it's, a, it's, a, it's, an, intense, it's, it's an intense situation. Um, but, you know, small room, everybody working together. Uh, the, the way Carl had, had laid out the executive to where, um, is the source code all open, openly available now? So if, if, if you look at the source code, you see that the, the, the different, you know, the signals and then the messages are laid on top of this. It's just, everything is all layered together so that it's, it's all just, it's, he, he implemented an interesting stack in assembler language. Now, why did we write in assembler language? Okay. In 1983, if you took C code to do simple operations and, and gave it to a compiler, you'd go, okay, well, I'm doing this, and so it should take three instructions. And it would take eight. And, it, and not only would it take eight, but it would store and, 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 and recall from memory capriciously in the middle of those eight. And it's like, really? We just could not get the the speed and size that we needed to fit our code into 128 kilobytes of memory. Because that's our original target, okay? Is to get this all to run in 128K. 
uh, why assembler? Uh, I'm gonna, I, I have some notes. I'm gonna do, I'm just, I'll go through the notes. Did, did you remember when, uh, uh, if, okay, I'm gonna refer to the movie that we saw last night, but not everybody saw it. And uh, one of the points somebody made is that the Atari ST worked at eight megahertz on the 68,000 and come ran at seven point something, okay. And what that seven point something is, is an even division of the frequency clock that you need in order to do the NTSC sweeping. And in fact, if you have a PAL Amiga, it works at a slightly different rate because it's got a different multiplier and divider in there. Um, and so it's true that, uh, that we weren't running at the full eight megahertz of the processor. And so actually, after Com I'm gonna jump ahead to when Commodore acquired us. Here's, the, here's, the, here's, here's what Commodore didn't know how to do. Um, they went to Motorola and said, we need these to be cheaper, okay? We need, we need our Motorola 68,000 chips to be cheaper. And they said, I'm sorry, we can't do that because we have contracts with everybody that says that everybody that gets this eight megahertz processor gets it for the same low price that everybody else gets. And we said, well, we don't need an eight megahertz. We only need a seven point something. It's like, oh, well, that's different. Okay, <laughs> now we can cut you a deal where you can get those for cheaper. So, um, so that that came out. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna um, talk. So if if you look at my business cards, and here's one of my later business cards. I I, I have an earlier business card that doesn't say Kodiak on it because um, uh, we hadn't realized the extent to which Kodiak was going to be a name from Amiga Computer, um, and and I I have plenty of these if, if you want somebody. Um, and so it says manager of text and imaging systems and everybody on the software team was a manager. Okay? And so some people express their managerness in a creative way. Like something wizard something. And I, I don't remember all the people that had that kind of title. But I was a manager of text and imaging systems which means as I said before that um, you know, Dale and I divvied up the, the graphics responsibilities. I did the, the text rendering on it. And I was also the um, imaging system manager, which means I wrote the printer drivers. And so, to my knowledge, this is the first printout of an Amiga computer. Um, I'll pass it around. Um, I, I remember we, we, had, we, we, we put in a custom a font just to get this this word Amiga, which is kind of all done in Amiga script like thing, and it talks about uh, what 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 the wonderful Amiga is. So, so I say, and that was done on an inkjet printer, which was hecka expensive, and really wasn't the market for what we were shooting for, which is a computer for Dale's mom. Okay. So, 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 so this was our touchstone. Our touchstone was, you know, we're going to do this, 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 this. Okay, but will Dale's mom understand this? Okay, and if the answer was no, this isn't, this isn't right for Dale's mom, then it wasn't right for what we were trying to do, which was to get computing down in price and available and, and useful for everybody. So um, the, uh, the driver that I did work on, and I'm going to be wasteful here. I have saved five of these for decades for no good reason. I'll tell you the reason. I'll tell you the reason I saved them is because I had them in black and white and in color, and I only saved the color ones. And the reason I only saved the color ones is because um, they're the the most interesting ones. And I'm going to take out the. And so here's this printer, and it's a thermal printer, and this is why it's fun, okay? So it's got strips of yellow, magenta, and cyan, and a little black um, registration mark here. And so this ribbon goes through the printer, okay, and prints out three passes, okay? Yellow, magenta, cyan, and then runs ahead until it finds this black registration mark again so they can go okay now I'm ready for the next one and it prints it and so this is one of those things where 
if you had this ribbon, then you could see what people printed because it, the, it's the inverse of it is on this ribbon. So, and, so the reason I saved this is because that's a fun ribbon. And so, so have fun with it. Take a section. <laughs> Pull out more if you want. It's just, I have three more, three or four more of those, and so I can do this like every decade for the rest of my life, right? So it's, it, I'm, I'm, I'm due, I'm due for another, um, to, to send this out again. So, um, let's see, where am I going? That's going to be the why I'm here thing. We'll do that towards the end. We've done this. So we get to we get to CES, and and honestly, I look at those pictures of CES ago, and I, I I I've been there. I know I've been there, but honestly, I don't remember anything other than what the inside of the booth looks like. And so it's like I'm not really even sure that I've been there, but I'm pretty sure I was there because I think I was upset because the next year I didn't get to go to CES. And, and that was the year, so this would have been 1984, and my recollection of New Year's Eve 1984, okay, is how do you celebrate New Year's Eve? You celebrate it with a toast, right? And so we had some orange juice in the refrigerator, and Bruce Artwick and I toasted each other Happy New Year because he was hanging around trying to get the flight simulator to work, and I was there doing whatever it is that I was doing there. And, and that's the kind of work environment it was. It's, it's, uh, so, so my eldest is, was born in May of 1985. And um, m my wife knew to come visit me at the office. Okay? And, and sometimes she would bring... After after it was Sarah was born, you know, she'd bring the baby. It's like here's dad, you know. It's like it's, right. so. The, so Microsoft, excuse me. So Commodore went through some some transitions. Um, the picture that you see, um, that you've you've seen snapshots, close ups, and stuff like that. This is outside the Lark Avenue office, which is in Los Gatos, which is. This, this was the fancy digs. This wasn't the room that I was talking about before. Um, the room that I was talking about before was uh, a tilt-up off, you know, office complex for a bunch of different companies that didn't have you know, enough money. It, you, you know, rent a space. That's the one with the metal door. Small room. And it was pre-Commodore. Okay. So what did we do with Commodore money? We, we got ourselves some nicer digs. Let me, let me take a step back so, uh, to, to the collapse of the video game industry. So, this is going to be disjoint, not practice. So, here we were at CES with really the game machine that wouldn't become popular for another decade. I mean, when did the 16 bit machines come out? The, the standard game machines. It was, it was like, it was, like three, it was years later that, that the game machine went, oh, the game industry kind of picked back up again. We just hit the wrong time to show up. And so we had a bit of an existential crisis because we knew that it, we were not selling to investors the idea that you can invest money in a sinking business. And so what are we going to do with it? Because we knew we had something special. Um, I don't know when this is from. We, we, we talked to, uh, to educational uh, company. That's probably later than that. We talked to, we, we went, we talked to educational company. You know, it's like, oh, we can be the, the education computer. Um, we, uh, we turned ourselves around into, okay, so now we have to be a personal computer. And... And you remember how I came in as, as kind of the junior graphics guy to Dale? Um, there's one other guy that's the junior guy, and that is um, we had some people come in from Williams Electronics. Uh, Sam Decker came first, and then RJ came after that. And so RJ was kind of the junior game library interface guy. And so 
when we realized that we had to do the desktop, the, there were two people that were kind of available to then lead that. Oh, and I'm supposed to go check out and make sure that the uh, spaghetti is no longer in the refrigerator and it's not anymore. It's, it's in the big refrigerator, so we're good. Um, and so RJ and I see this opportunity to be, it's like a piece. I can carve out a piece that's like everybody can go, oh, he's that guy. And, and so we had a little bit of a, so I have the experience with writing the interface for this, this color graphics terminal that, that applications use this interface to talk to the So, I, you know, this is what I bring to the party. And RJ, and, and he was more enthusiastic. Can you believe it? And, um, and so he became the father of intuition there. But, but really, uh, you know, I could have been the father. But, yeah, water into the bridge. Um, so, so we had these different tasks that we did, and Commodore gave us an infusion of capital that, that made it so that we went from a company that, you've heard about the, the half a million dollars that we owed to, to uh, Atari. My understanding is that we owed people in general six million dollars. I don't know how you do that. And, and, I, and I don't know if that number is right. And, and so please, if you're on this and you're fact checking me, uh, uh, Bob at Bokabu.net, B-O-K-A-B-U, you can tell me that it's, it's wrong. Were you guys getting paid? Hmm? Were you guys getting paid? Yes. And, and the stories about why we're getting paid are true. Um, because uh, Dave Morse personally paid our second to the, the, the paycheck just prior to uh, the, the penultimate one before we were acquired by Commodore. And Jay Miner mortgaged his house to pay for the last one. And again, this isn't something you find out until later. Now, um, did you see on the video how RJ said, so I kind of, uh, like, unlike other people, I, I knew some secrets as to what was going on. And, uh, and so that ties in with the, um, with the office romance, probably. Um, which was um, a, a not well kept secret that we can that we can get back to, um, and uh, and so sometimes you have information that other people don't have. So, um, so when I get back to the office romance, remind me about bringing my daughter in too. So, uh, give me a sec. And so so Commodore buys us, and. The president of Commodore comes to visit us and to, to see what it is that he is. Did I just. just no, okay. To, to see what it is that he's purchased. And so he's walking through this room that I'm telling you about that has, you know, and, and looking at the, the, the breadboards that you've seen, the picture of the breadboards on the workbench. This is this wall here, okay? Is the, is the workbench wall. There's a row of. Of desks in the middle at some point, and then there's a row of oh, desks, desks at, at the far end, and, and, then, and then my desk at the end. Um, the you know, he comes in, uh, he's he's looking over the place, and Carl Strassenrath says, "So, I heard you just had a bunch of layoffs. Okay, what's that about?" And the president says, "Oh, you don't need to worry about them. They're not exempt." And so we got a sense right off the bat about the, the difference in the culture of um, the attitude of the executives of the company towards their employees from the one that we had been at, where Dave Morse um, was the saint that you've heard him describe it. And, and Jay Minor was the, the rock that, I can talk about Jay Minor later, because he's the one that eventually laid me off, and that's, he, he did a great job at that, which is kind of weird to say. But. Um, and, uh, and then to, to Commodore, where it's like, don't worry about them, they're non-exempt employees. It's like, and then of course, we're, you know, we're young, it's like, you mean like hourly? It's like, yeah, yeah, they, they were just like factory. It's like, it's like, okay. So, 
Um, so then we get this money, and what do we do? We, we move into nicer digs, okay? And so now, the software guys have offices. Shared offices, but offices. And I will tell you that for a startup company, I really do think offices are dead. Um, I, I shared an office with, with Carl Sassenrath. Uh, again, I, I can't say enough good about what Carl Sassenrath brought just to the, to the foundation of the Amiga in terms of the, the layout of the executive that it, it just, yeah. Um, and the offices next to me were, um, golly, I to, I, see, it, it, there was some shuffling that went on. And so my, my brain isn't clear as to who sits in what office. And one of the reasons there's some shuffling that goes on is because, um, you know, where we, you know, I'm the manager of this and I'm the manager of this. It, well, it, it turns out there were, there started to be some conflicts. And if you were here yesterday and, and you heard me talk about in this room, if we, in, this, in this bullpen on Scott Avenue, if we had conflicts, um, the, the, the resolution was to bring out the kendo foam bats, okay, with the padded handles. And it, it, you didn't actually have to use them. It was like Bob Caruso said, okay, it's time for the bats, you know. And, and, and that was enough. That was to say, okay, you guys are being ridiculous. Just come up with a decision that works for both, you know, and, and, and let's move on. And that was, that was his clue that, you know, it's time to stop arguing about this. And, um, that's, that's another thing. I've lost track of Bob Caruso. I don't know anybody that knows where Bob Caruso is. I know that af after Amiga, at one point he was at Farallon, and and then off the face, and you know everybody talks about it, all the contributions people make, and he, he doesn't get credit, and the reason he doesn't get credit is because he wasn't a in-your-face manager. He kind of said, "This is what we need to do. Go do it." And it, he was he was he was very liberating in that sense. But, um, but when, when he needed to mention the foam bats, he'd do it. So, so I, I think he deserves um, credit for some of this, too, that he doesn't get, because we don't know where he is. So, um, so, we, so we move from that environment to the office environment, and now there's, um, that now that things, the foam bats don't come out right away, and so things fester a little bit. So, so there are some parts about this, this trajectory that, that weren't as pretty as you might imagine. But guess what? I, 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 has, there, has anybody here been employed? That's life. That's just the way it, it, it is. Um, so I'm running out of things to say. I'm gonna, I've, I've mentioned the New Year's tea, toast. Um, the Amiga launch. Oh my goodness. I, so if you've ever been on a party plane, then you know what I'm talking about. But I bet you haven't. You've been on a party boat, you've rented a boat, okay, a lot, you and a lot of your friends go on a boat, you go someplace, and you, and you have a trip, and you, and you get off, and it's like you had a great time. Okay, if you've seen pictures of this, of, of a couple people, in, you know, okay, we had the first three or four rows of the coach section of this flight to New York with us and our families, and so, you know, you know, and the seatbelt site wasn't the line, it wasn't lit the whole time, right? And so, so you get up and move around, and what do you do when you get up and move around when you're in an airplane? You go, you go down the aisle, and then you come back to your seat, and you sit down, and it's like, no, you go talk to your buddies. Oh, it was a great flight. And so we get to, uh, to New York, and we, and we tell all our, our coworkers from the Commodore side, the Pennsylvania side of the aisle about this great experience we had on the flight. And they say, you know about the no more than three people in the same plane at the same time policy, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the what? Yeah, well, you know, so it's a, it's a business thing where you, you, know, you can't risk more than three people on the flight. It's, it's, it's like, yeah, well, we've all got our reservations back, so we're doing it again. Uh, and, and so the launch was an amazing thing. I brought my family. So you, you, it was, um, so, so by now I have, um, I have uh, Sam Dicker had a kid before I did, uh, Jackie and Sam, but, um, 
So, you know, in the same way that I didn't have the actual baby. So Carla had the baby. Um, and so we've got, uh, we've got two babies. Um, and, you know, dressed, you know, the women dressed up in our, in our rent, rented, it's just, um, it was a fun time. Uh, Tavern on the Green is gone. I would not have been to Tavern on the Green were it not for the Amiga lunch, because I got to go to the Tavern on the Green and pretty much stay about, really, honestly, about this to the back wall as, is as close as I got to Andy Warhol, because he had an entourage that he brought with him that I did not recognize and it seemed like, you know, they're just here because they have to be here. They're not really interested in meeting us. Uh, so I was just like, okay, leave that well enough alone. But, um, the launch was great. Um, came back, and, but that was just the launch. I mean, that's, that's 1.0 kind of numbers. So that, okay, I have to apologize. When I said that, that that the the crashing of the 5000 was like took me back we so at at, at, at some point in here Carl Sassenlath uh, is gets um, uh, expresses his frustration with um, the Commodore management and what they did to the company in terms of not doing anything, it, 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 it's just like, you know, and leaves, okay? And so now, um, so now I get um, Stan Shepard to share an office with, because Stan Shepard was across the hall with Rob Peck, bless him, Rob is no longer with us, um, because, um, and Rob, I, I don't mean this in, in, a, in a disrespectful way, um, but when you're on the phone with your wife, and all of a sudden your voice went up and it was real, just you know how sweet he is. It's like, oh god. <laughs> and yeah, he had a beautiful wife, a loving wife, and 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 it's just, but really, do you have to go there? And so and so and so that was a little bit grating. And so Stan, when he had the opportunity to leave that office and come sit, <laughs> ostensibly because. I had an outside office, we, the, the, we had the window ones and he was on the inside. And so really he was moving to a, a nicer office in that sense. But. Stan was in charge of, of QA. Um, and, and by that, I, you've all worked, if, if, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to presume your background. I work in software for, I'm a second generation programmer. And my son is the third generation. Um, and. Uh, and so I've seen how different companies do quality. Um, uh, when I say he was in charge of QA, that was mostly managing the bug reports that we got from the developers that we foisted off our releases onto. Okay, we, we our, our internal QA department was, was, well, let's see if it works. And yeah, it worked, okay, let's send it to our developers and see if they can tell us anything more about it. And it was not a modern, QA department. Um, and so I, I, I apologize for anybody that has an early month and crashes and it's like, yeah. Um, I had hoped to bring with me my um, microanalyst uh, state analyzer, which we used to find a lot of, of, of bugs by, um, I did bring the Amiga 500 that has the keyboard taken off so that you can get to the chip, the, the processor, um, we put the keyboard in a, have you seen it, in a, in a 2000 thing and drilled holes for the LEDs. And so that way we can put this thing, and literally the best way to find bugs in the, in the early days was to slap that thing on and say, so, you see any access is to zero? And, and, and it's like, yep, there's one right there. It's like, okay, who did that? Because nobody is ever supposed to read zero in memory. And if you are, that means that you forgot to check the result and then you went to go assign it as so. Um, so we found a lot of bugs, but boy, we didn't find them all. And uh, and so I, and I mentioned this again uh, last night. I apologize for those that are repeating. And so at at one point, it got so bad that developers went, "Yeah, phew, I'm not going to use this." It's like, okay, so it's beta quality. Now will you use it? It's like, uh, okay, it doesn't seem to be beta quality. And then we'd stop getting bug reports. And, and it's like, okay, well this is the gamma release. 
Okay, that's that's the one after beta. And, and so we're really serious now. Don't let us ship this unless it. Uh, and so we get some more bugs in, and the bugs would trickle down. And it's like, and then there, then there'd be this bug that's like, really? How did this slip past all? Of it? Really? Nobody's really been. Okay, this is the Omega release. Okay, okay, okay. And we're going straight to the end of the Greek alphabet, and we did not ship Omega one. Okay, it, Omega went through a couple of sites, and I don't remember which of the, the releases this was for. Uh, the uh, time passes. Um, my mother and father, um, stepfather, had, had, were working in London at the time. And the reason they were working in London is because he'd been given an offer to to um, be a, the chief geophysicist for the company he worked for and in the London office. And so he came home one day and he said, so I've been offered the job of chief geophysicist, would you like to go to London? And it's like, um, well, do I have to decide now? And he said, no, tomorrow's fine. And, and, so, and, and, and so they went and, and they had, a, I'm, I'm really grateful that they, that they went. And I had a similar situation happen to me, which was, uh, they said, you know, Commodore is doing this project in Germany and they need some help from us to do it. Would you be willing to, to do that? And I took German in high schools, which for me is through 1975 and so this is 1986. And I go, yeah, I, I, but ugh, I, I have a baby. So, so my baby was now nine months old and uh, uh, and so I go home and I, 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 my wife knows this story about the England thing. And so I said, you know that story. So, so it's pretty much the same thing. It's like, um, except I kind of need to know now <laughs> whether we can go to, but I've always wanted to. So, um, so, and I can do the math. I can do the math here. Let's see. We, we left on May. So, so in Febru February, February, in February, of 1986, uh, we, a, a bunch, uh, three or four of us went over to, um, to, to Braunschweig. Um, uh, and then uh, came back and went again. Uh, it, 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 we, we, we went, that's a, I'm, getting, I'm getting my timelines messed up. But, um, so I apologize for that. There's a, there's a couple, um, Anyway, so I end up in Braunschweig, which in English is called Brunswick, with um, my wife and I and my, my daughter Sarah, who is nine months old, and RJ and Karen, which is kind of interesting because Karen is not a developer. Um, and so, okay, that's, that, that's, that's, that's okay. Um, and RJ, at, at that point, I think he was there he may have been there on contract. He may have already left the company at that point too. So I'm not sure if he was still an employee when, when he went. Um, and so uh, Germany, sidecar project. Remember when I said remind me earlier about this, this thing that I did for HP where I took a, a, an HP 12C calculator and I put it onto their touchscreen computer. The interesting thing about that project is that HP's mechanism for selling stuff at the time, and remember this is an engineer's company, was to take the cost of goods of, of your product, multiply it by about pi, and that was the selling cost. And, and so it's like, oh man, I don't know if you guys are familiar with margins, but oh my, you know, an over 3x margin, it's like, you just don't do that anymore. Okay. So, the difficulty with that is, is that then I had a $100 boxed piece of software that would emulate the 12C calculator on your, on your touch screen computer, but you could go buy a 12C and put it in your pocket for the same price. It just made no sense whatsoever. It's like, who would buy this when you can get the real thing for the same price? And 
And that's the personal sensibility that I brought to the sidecar project, which is you guys want PC compatibility, and so you're literally going to slap a 286 PC onto the side of the Amiga so that they can communicate with each other and share a display, but it's not going to be cheaper than a two. So, what? Why is and so? But. At, at this point, you know, at, at this point, we had had enough experience with Commodore, and I, I and I, I apologize for saying this, to be resigned to the fact that some of the things that we we're doing weren't going to be making sense. Uh, so I go to Germany. Um, I work with interesting people. We, we try and set, so we have a room that's a little bit smaller, that has at at at, at some point three people in it because. I forget who the third one, whether, what, I think, it, I can't remember whether it was Bart, um, Barry Whitebook, or, ne so, so we had people coming in and out, um, but RJ and I were the, 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 the longer, the, the ones that were for the longest period of time. And we tried to set it up as the no smoking zone, because we're from California, okay, this is 1986, and our boss in Germany is a smoker. So, so, you know, the, it, anyway, we'll pretend the room, the door to the room is here. In my mind, it was the other way around. And so he's standing, standing at the door with his cigarettes, and we're saying, we set this up, this is no smoking zone. And he says, but this, this doesn't bother you. And I'm going, okay. His, his English up until now has been really good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and so it's like, does he understand what he's saying? Uh, so Germany and, and culture clashed. Uh, uh, I, I told the story last night uh, about um, we have these lunchtime, they've got a cafeteria, but the cafeteria is essentially, they get delivered TV dinners on a, on a rolling cart that the woman at, oh, bless her, she didn't have any English. And I, I had, you know, 10 years ago, I had three years of high school German, which meant that, oh my goodness, it meant that when I was looking at what I wanted the next week, I went, oh, that sounds familiar, labor, something, uh, liver, oh, yeah. And then I, you've heard me say this last night, and it's like, and so the second time I did it, I felt really stupid. But fortunately, uh, one of the other guys said, oh, I, I, would you like the goulash instead? And it's like, yeah, sure, I, I'll happily trade with you. Um, and uh, Germany is an interesting place. So this is, remember, this is before uh, reunification. And, um, and so I, I don't know how many history buffs you have out there, but, but I asked my coworkers who were all um, fresh out of school from the local polytechnic. They had grown up in the town. They had literally... You know, and Commodore in Germany is, is a big deal because Commodore is the shirt sponsor for the Bayern München um, uh, soccer team, which is a big deal, okay? And, and you remember I said Bayern München, which is the Munich, München, whatever? Well, so my coworkers, they're talking to me in English and they keep talking about Brunswick. And so where's that? Well, that's... Braunschweig. It's like, what, what? It's because the English name for it. It's like, ah, oh, because. Um, I had some interesting experiences with my 10, 10 year old German um, with these folks. Um, so, you know, you, you, you have cognates in your head for, for different words. And uh, suchen is uh, to, um, to, to see. Um, and uh, there's some there's some prefixes you can put on the front of it, and and it changes the meaning of the word. And so I'm talking to them in German, and um, I invite them to come um, try my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I, I you know to versuchen, which is which is try, and they kind of gave me this look. And I, I'm playing it back in my head. Besuchen, <laughs> besuchen, visit. <laughs> so it was. So it, it's, it's, you know, fun with German. Um, German customs. So, so we're invited to a party, a company party. 
okay? It's going to be at the same hotel that, that we're staying at. We're staying in the apartments, and, and, the, and it's at 8 o'clock. And so RJ and Karen and, and Carl and I, and, and we, get, we get dinner, and we go to the party. And it's a formal sit-down dinner. <laughs> and it's like, what? why didn't you tell us that it, <laughs> the dinner was included? And it's like, it's, it was at 8 o'clock. Of course dinner was included. <laughs> And we're going, oh, okay, another culture clash. Right? So, and then, you know, we're sitting there with the bait, and it's like, uh, um, RJ visited m my home with Carla early enough in Sarah's arrival that Carla's folks were still there. They came, when babies showed up, they came to help us out. So they were still there. So this is like when the baby is incredibly young. And RJ is a baby fan. It's like you could tell that, and, and so, so afterwards, and my, my, my mother-in-law probably will forget, it's just like, does he have kids? It's like, no, he's not even married, you know? And, uh, and so the reason that RJ and Karen got together is because, well, they were made for each other. And, and boy, they both wanted kids. And they did such a great job of it. And so I don't know if you've met any of their kids. It's, it's like, yeah, they, they did a good job of it. But, but I had some of the earliest glimpses of, oh my God, this guy is baby crazy. And with, 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 with mine, so. That's my RJ story. Germany. So I'm in Germany. Uh, my daughter has a, a East German passport span, stamp because Carla and Karen and, and Sarah go to the Berlin Zoo, and so that means getting on the train with uh, um, with unfriendly train attendants that that uh, Frau und Kind, Frau und Kind, which is mother and child. It's like you're supposed to go here, you're supposed to go here. It's like okay, um, and uh, so I, I get out of Germany um, right about. Right, I'm in Berlin, so on the way out, I visit Berlin, and, and, then, and then Frankfurt, and then leave town. And so in Berlin, it's like right before May Day, uh, 1986, and, and on the East German side, this isn't a Commodore story, should I continue anyway? Please. Okay, on the East German side, they're putting up these banners for, for May Day, okay? Because, you know, the, the, this is on the other side of the Brandenburg Gate. There's this big um, something strasse, and, and they're, they're, they're putting up all the banners because they're going to have a big parade. And, and we're visiting, and, and we take both uh, East and West German tour, uh, tours, bus tours. And on the, on the West German tour, the woman points to the sign that says Innenstadt, which means downtown. And she says, that sign points to downtown. But if you make that turn and go downtown, you actually can't get there because there's a wall in the way, but we leave that up in, in, be, to remind ourselves of the hope that, at, that someday we will be reunited. And, okay, so I, I grew up in the 1960s doing duck and cover drills where the first Friday of every month at noon, the air sirens go off and you get under your desk and, and tuck your head over your hands so that they they can identify that that smudge is Bob and that smudge, you know, it's a, yeah. <laughs> because, really, what difference does it make? It's, it's, just, it's just to line you all up and, okay, and so this is, this is, this is, uh, yeah, so, um, and, I, and I remember very distinctly thinking to myself, you poor deluded woman, get over it, it will never happen. And this is, 1986, and you can, I, and and I'm sure everybody in the world was surprised, um, but I had recent memory of how surprised I was when when the wall went down. So um, there was one time in Germany where it's like Bob, you have to come back. We're about ready to release 1.4, I think it was, and 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 you need to come back and and do something with the release, and I forget why. And I said, no, I don't. I and, and so, yes, you do, no, you don't. It's, it's like I got my family. So, fortunately, my folks were in England, and so I said, tell you what, Carl and Sarah go to England for a week, 
they come back. I go to, to California because changing time zones with a baby, oh man, it's, it's, it, it's, it dooms you. For, when we first arrived in Germany, Carla was sick and the baby was crying. It's just, I, it, it's bad. So we did that. And I went to, to California for a week, did roughly nothing. With uh, this is, I'm, I'm in the office with Stan, who's the QA guy, and it's like, what can I do to help out? It's like, and I um, came back, and then uh, the the term was over, and then I I, I go back to uh, um, to California. Um, I, I I can't. I've got too much stuff. I leave a box to be shipped, and it's a, and while I was in Germany, and honestly. I, when I was thinking about this story last night, I, I, I was thinking whether there was a correlation between this story and the you have to come back story. Um, Henry Rubin, uh, Henry Rubin, is that right? Does anybody know? Um, South African director, um, uh, and, uh, at one point engineering director of, of Commodore. So, so he comes to Germany to visit Germany, and he's going to have a meeting, and, and a company meeting. Okay. Um, and I don't get an invite. I, no problem. I, you know, I don't. And so I said, "Oh, so when is it?" And it's like, "Oh, no, you, you don't. You don't need need to come." And so I said, "No, it's, it's, I, I'd be interested to see." You. Oh, but it's going to be German. And it's like, it's like, yeah, it's it's okay. I speak some. It's, no, no, you don't. You're doing this. It's like, boy, they really don't want me to go to this meeting. I, it, it, I mean, really. I mean, it's like it's just this weird vibe. Why do they not want me to go to this meeting? And so here's why. So I, I get back to the United States, and on, on, on Monday, I am awake enough to go into the office just in the afternoon. And I'm, I'm coming into the office, and my friend, Dale Luck, that I've been working with since 1979, so this is seven years I've been working with him, is leaving the building and he is not well and I it's just like something is wrong and I have I, I'm really I don't know what it is but but he's not a happy guy and he's not in that state he's you know so yeah so this is um, and I can't remember whether he told me what the deal was or not I, I, I just I just can't remember. But what the deal was is that on, on Tuesday when I went into the office, it was the layoffs. And and God bless him. So at this point, uh, Rich, I forget his name. The the uh, the, the director of, of Amiga West had had been kicked out. Jay Miner was the manager. Um, and he's not, he, that's, that's not his, his role of choice. He, you know, he, he's the father of the Amiga, he's not the, the taskmaster. He, he's just, and, and bless it, when, when Commodore said, so here's what you're going to do, you're going to lay off a third of the people now, you're going to lead a third of the people off when, they, when you finally get that release out the door, and then, um, uh, uh, you know, so, you know, get, get cracking on that first list. Um, he said, you yeah, know, I'm not going to do that. And so I'm going to, I'm not going to tell these people and the number two people, oh yeah, you were spared. Okay. And, uh, and so he let us all know. And then he brought us, those of us who are on the second list. Okay. Again, he wasn't a manager type. He probably wasn't versed in California labor law. Um, he turned around and hired us all back as independent contractors, uh, for, uh, I think the our base salary plus the seven percent that the company usually pays for for the social security it, it was it was just um, it's uh, which which started my thirteen years of consulting i, I did th after after this I did thirteen years of consulting that was the lowest paying job i I, I ever took as as a consultant but but it was right there it's like you know you're, you're right, here Say again? The one there that was getting kept, who were they? Yes. <laughs> so here's, here's who they were. The people that Jay Miner did not realize 
were the third that Commodore wasn't telling him about. Okay? Um, and so, um, if you've seen, so, so they're the people that, that, you know, that closed down the uh, Amiga West Coast. I, um, some hardware people, some software people, um, I'm trying to remember what, uh, it's either Dusty or Dutch, and I forget which. I think it's Dusty, <laughs> which I believe is short for Siegfried, because the other one is short for Robert. Because it turns out, after the four Bobs, we hired a Robert who became, a, a Bob who became Robert, and another Bob who was, I think, Dutch. But I'm not. I, I, I forget. So, so it's, at one point there were there were even more bobs. But the rule the rule still held. You couldn't keep the name Bob if you. So, even though we were we were had these independent offices now, it's just like still. It's like nope. It's. Um, so Jay, essentially, he's too nice a guy to to lie to people. And so he 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 brought me to the office. He said it's between you and this guy. And I know that you can go back to Germany. They'd be glad to have you. Continue your work on the sidecar, uh, and uh, which now it, 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 th you know things have it's like now it becomes evident why it's like oh yeah sure we'll take the box we'll ship it for you and then they didn't ship it and it's like because they thought it was coming back and and uh, and and so I had the the kid situation this was going to be going back to Germany for a longer period of time without the kid and 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 the calculation there was not that I was going to be able to do that comfortably for the same amount of money that RJ was getting from them and I knew how much he was getting from them and so I half again as much it and I told them that number and they said that's more than the president makes and I said is that a no <laughs> because because you know in your life you do calculations as to as to what what things mean to you and and yes I I can be bought for 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 periods of time as as long as the yeah um, and so uh so it turns out it was a no, and they did ship this stuff back to me. I said, I, they said, well, do you really need this stuff? And I said, look, um, my grandmother knit me that sweater that's in that box. It's, it's like, you know, uh, you know the, the book that you gave to me as a parting gift, a nice book of brown chocolate, is in that box. And so they shipped, they shipped it to me. They did it to me. So that began the, the 13 years of consulting that I did, uh, much of which was for Commodore. And so uh, uh, I got to go to um, Frankfurt and Paris developers conferences on Commodore's Nickel because you know they, they laid us off, but they didn't have anybody to replace us. Um, the um, I, it, it became clear what what the what the meeting was in Germany was about. That was um, that was them being told, you know. We're going to shut down that expensive West Coast Amiga operation, the, the Ranger that we're working on, which was, um, which was a, a, an Amiga 1000 with expansion slots that didn't look like a PC. Okay, it, 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 If you look at the 2000, which is what they got, they, they essentially took boxes that they already had and, and laid out stuff to fit in it and, and ship it. No, it would, you know, Zero cards were going to be uniquely, so, yeah, it's, it, and um, I like the, the Amiga 1000 with the keyboard tray thing, and, the, and you put them, it's just, it, and, and we, ended, we ended up with the expansion connector for the Amiga 1000 going out the side instead of the top. If you ever, if, if you saw last night the pictures of what the Amiga was going to be, and you saw these things stacked up, because at one point, the connector, the expansion was going to go out the top. Think about the coffee. Okay. So I, 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 anyway, so it, it, it went out the side. And, and, and the other thing is, is that out the side, it's just an extension. And so cost reduction, I think. Um, and so this was a, a, a fruitful uh, relationship. Uh, Carl Sassenrath. Um, was getting anxious to work on his baby. If, if you've had him to come and talk to her about um, Rebel and um, 
And so he was shedding his uh, contractual obligations that he'd picked up when he left Amiga. And so I picked up the Microbotics uh, uh, SCSI work and, the, and they also had some other peripherals that, um, that I did work for them. Um, uh, Glenn Keller, um, who, was, who was in the video, who was, um, he had some contacts um, from, from Scotland from the time that he'd worked in the, in the wave tank in, in Scotland that uh, called Deep Ocean Technologies and they were making an underwater submersible that was going to be umbilical to an Amiga to do the, uh, the, the Genlocked video with a, dis with, a he with a heads up display and they needed somebody to um, essentially take the software and put it onto flash cards and get it to, you know, so it's, it, um, I worked on that. that was, one of my shortest contracts, but also kind of fun. Um, so yeah, I got a chance to keep my hand in, and then every once in a while, a Commodore would say, "You know, you know," and 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 so they they closed down the the Lark the um, Lark Avenue office. Was it Lark? No, University Avenue office. What it, it'll tell me on this what it was. University Avenue office, okay, which is the one in Los Gatos, and. Uh, and instead, what they had on Lark Avenue, which was like a block away, was this guy whose name I've always forget, but which I have written down here. It says Han. I can't remember whether it was Han or Hans. Anyway, so um, Commodore had acquired Moss Technologies, a fab house, great move. And, and this house had chips to sell that were in excess of what were used for Commodore products. And so there was this rep for Commodore on the West Coast that, um, that sold chips. And he had this office that was way too big uh, doing contract work for Commodore. What was the Santa um, office? There is a Santa Clara office. Santa Clara office is, is, is the bullpen, okay? That's on, that's, that's on Scott Boulevard. So that's the, that's the, to my knowledge, that's the first office. Um, that's the one with the sliding door, the sliding door with the foam bat on it. That's the, um, um, everybody in the bullpen. Uh, uh, it, it, we were just, a, there was one main wall that, that kind of separated engineering from non-engineering. And in the non-engineering side was where the, was the woman who could type faster than anybody that I had ever seen type before, you know, and then hit the return. And, and so she's the one. So one of the things I did was um, I, I was responsible for, okay, we have a keyboard. What are we actually going to put on the label of each key? And, and that's the decision to make it those days. It wasn't like, well, of course you're going to use an IBM key. It's, it's, you, you, you made decisions. And so um, I worked with her to be, okay, try this keyboard, you know, where, where can we put the return key, um, especially with an eye towards, um, the, the reason we have this big fat return key is because on European keyboards, one of those goes away, one of the, a piece of it goes away and, uh, and, and gets added on to, to add in the additions for Europeans that aren't accents because the accents are taken care of by the non-spacing accent keys. So, so I'm, I'm actually happy with the. So I, I made sure we used the ISO Latin one character set. That wasn't the one that we were originally using, so that we could have um, the uh, you know automatic. Yeah, okay, European. You bet. Western European. We're, we're good. Um, and because because we're when we're looking at some of the early decisions, it's like, do we use this? Um, give me a moment. There, um, there's a French home communication system. Minitel, thank you. Are, are we going to use, you know, like line draw characters like the Minitel has, so that we can put together these character-based displays? Like, no, we're great. <laughs> you know, so, so you know, but but we but we but we 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 played around with the idea of, you know, what are we going to put in something other than ASCII? I mean, we we all know what ASCII. I did use EBCDIC when I was in school, but we we didn't consider that. Um, 
help me out. Where am I? Hmm? Keyboards. Yeah, keyboard layouts. Did that. Oh, so thank you, thank you. And so, and so I've got, so I've got this. So I'm hanging out in this this cavernous area, and I tell this story about the um, Loma Prieta earthquake. And I told it to the person that I tell it about, and he said that wasn't me. And so I don't know who it was. I think if it wasn't Jim, it was maybe Bart. And so, so I'm in this building during an earthquake, and and it's a two-story concrete sided tilt up thing that you know if it decides to fall, you know it's like uh, um, so um, whoever it was and I don't know who it was you know the earthquake starts and they start running to the exit and it's like okay that's not what I would do and I'm starting to look under my desk and it's kind of crowded full of crap and I look under their desk and it's all nice and good it's like I'll go under their desk so I start to go under their desk and they almost run me over running back because what had happened is they were running towards the exit that was this hallway about this wide uh, to the t that was lined with bookshelves that had all the discrete components that we had brought with us from the Larkin new site in nice little drawers, resistors, capacitor, okay. And they had gone hlunk, boom. And, and so, um, um, and so that, that way was blocked. And so I ended up under the desk and they ended up outside and then that was the earthquake. And, and so we're sitting there looking at this pile of stuff and looking at how much we're getting paid as consultants for Commodore, which wasn't bad, and and realized that no, we would be doubling the loss of Commodore to pick this up and and put it back into their proper things. It is now trash because nobody here uses it. So it's, it was painful, but to to shovel all these components and and throw them away. So, um, so at some point in here. Commodore decides that um, that um, uh, Hans is he's retiring. Um, he uh, he had I remember he had a bad something a bad knee. He loved to play beach volleyball in Santa Cruz. I think he was from Santa Cruz. And the note from him says, Kodiak, if you close this place, please let me purchase my old office furniture. Now, oh, and, and the date of, of 1990. Uh, June of 1990. So it turns out I did close the place. And one of the things I did is I went, you know, those Herman Miller chairs that Bob Pariseau, who is, I, I don't know if you can tell from the pictures, he's a large man, and not just, I, I, I mean, he's, I, 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 I don't know if I looked up to him or not, but I did not look down on him. You, you, you have this sense as to how tall people are based on your own height, and he was a peer. And, um, and Carl Sassenrath, who at one point in his Amiga career worked from home lying on his stomach because his back was in such pain that he'd done something to it. And so he just, he needed to, he needed to really take care of his back. And me, because nothing fits me. We go to Herman Miller and we go chair shopping. And we pick out chairs for the, this is part of the move from, from Scott, so Lark's like, we're going to get ourselves some new furniture, you know? Because we've been, oh, you know, the kind of um, uh, uh, excrement-like secondhand chairs that you have kind of lying around that you, that you have in an office that's not well-funded. That's what we that's what we've been working on with Scott, Scott. So we've got these really nice chairs. So I bought my chair for 50 bucks. I don't remember what else I bought from Commodore, okay? But there were many things where I said that, that I said, so this, I mean, do you really want this back? It's like, no. It's like, do you really want this? And it's like, okay. So I ended up with stuff to then put into an office that I leased um, for the continuation of my consulting career. And, uh, and I, there's, there's a couple parting comments I want to make. One is, Here's the IEEE Spectrum 2001, March 2001, Amiga, the computer that would not die. And so this, was, this came out after I put my stuff from my personal office into my garage, okay? Boxed up, most of it boxed up, some of it loose. And I want to thank you because these guys 
had this article only halfway through. Okay, but we're, we're 15 years from this article, okay, and I had a box full of, let's face it, memorabilia that I was not using in my office, in, in, from my office, that was in my garage, that had not been touched for, really, honestly, since I put it in there. And so, so the, I, I want to thank you for, for when I said to myself, I can't throw it out, what can I do with it? It's like, ah, there's an Amy West conference in October. I can take some time off of work, clean up, the, but it didn't work very well. I, I, I didn't get it. I, and I should have taken off one more day this last week to, so, to, 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 to box it. So I ended up coming here with a van full of boxes of stuff that I didn't have to scrap for gold or I didn't have to take to a, to a special recycling center because it was a CRT and you can't just throw out CRTs anymore, okay? I could bring it to people who could appreciate it. And, and that means the world to me. And my wife would also like to thank you for the boxes that I'm going to be bringing home. <laughs> because, because this is space that she already has a use for. <laughs> no, because, because my, my, my sister's family is coming to visit us over Christmas, and so we have to take all the stuff that's in the rest of the house and put it someplace so that we can set up the two portable beds and yeah, it's, yeah, so, well, so it's like actually I'm hoping that I can convince her that um, that we want to get something like a teardrop trailer or something to where we can just hook it onto the car and and take off and go places and 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 it, like a like a like an emergency go bag except for fun as opposed to earthquake you know so um, I think I've gone through all the things I had up here. Um, do we do questions? I can do questions. Who was that uh, CBM president that visited you in uh, I, I, Is that Marshall Teague? Okay, so here's my question for you. Was Marshall Teague at one point a longshoreman? I don't know. <laughs> this guy was. This guy essentially had come up from the docks. You know, it, he, 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 he was a... Uh, um, uh, he, he, was, he, was, he was not born and bred computer industry. He was, uh, um, yeah. Uh, so, so is there anybody before or after that that you can think of? Yeah. So I don't know. Oh, so, so one person that I can, uh, I'm gonna tell another story. So when we moved to Lark Avenue, um, a part of the purchase was, we also got the Commodore representative that came to, to, to our office to, to, to be the Commodore representative, Martin Chabilsky. And, and, and I say that name as if I know how to spell it, but the Chabilsky I think starts with a P. I'm, I'm not sure, and, and, it, and, and there's a lot more letters in it than I say, and I remember you just kind of glide over it, it works great. Um, and, you know, I'm still young in my career. This guy taught me something interesting, and it was, we were arguing about whether or not a real-time clock goes into the A1000. And you know the answer to that, because you know you're not clipping batteries out of the A1000. Okay? And, um, and you also know that you have to enter the time every time you turn it on. It's just like, uh, okay, so, so this was a big, okay, and, and, and this was after the time of foam bats because it was a hardware software decision, and, um, and at one point, Martin just stepped in and he said, this is a decision, no clock, okay? Um, it saved us an amount of money that was I believe less than a dollar, but I'm not sure. It might have been more than a dollar, but it was, you know, it was not, not that. And but we were, we were worried about. It. Um, and and I and I and I, he, he's one of my touchstones for the value of a decision. Where you know what, it really didn't matter so much whether or not the Amiga 1000 had a clock or not. What mattered is that we stopped trying to decide whether the Amiga 1000 had a clock or not and move on. And, that, and, and just the value of having somebody 
that, that had the imprimatur of, I get to make this decision, this is the decision, now move forward. And so later, I'm talking to, to my colleagues in Westchester. Um, I, I'm, if I tried to name them, I would mess up and I would, um, I would mess up. But again, great group of guys to work with. Um, uh, by the time my last company paid trip to Europe happened, which was in 1991, I had acquired enough frequent flyer miles, okay, going to Pennsylvania and back, um, to get a companion ticket for my wife to come to with me to Paris. So that was nice. So, um, uh, so that, uh, that was 19, excuse me, that was February of 1990. That's when that was. So, these are good guys. I, I, if, you, if, you've, if you've had a chance to talk to them or not, um, the Commodore folks um, were also appropriately cynical about the management that they worked under, okay, as engineers have to be when they see what's going on. And uh, they had a great group to work with. Um, if I roll back, where, what am I going to pop the stack to? Decision making. Like the the decision making. Oh, and so what? And so what I found out talking to them is, he wasn't Commodore's guy. They hired him. They didn't know him either. Okay. <laughs> I thought that it's like, okay, he's their guy. He's their representative. You know, and so so he's, you know, from no. He was from he was from the West Coast. They hired him, and he had a duty to report. But but they didn't. They knew him less well than we did. And so, and so the mental picture of them that, uh, that I had of him, which is that, oh, well, he knows what's, you know, the Commodore story. It's like, no, he didn't know any better than anybody else. But, but, uh, but he did do some service with, uh, with, with driving the cost down because we were always concerned about cost. The, the thing at the beginning of the story about Dale's mom, oh, it broke our hearts every time we figured out how much this thing was gonna cost. Because it's like, oh, you know what? Yeah, she can't afford it. It's like, you know, once once you break into four digits, it's like, oh man, that's just. And and, and we tried everything we could. The 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 removable front memory thing. It's it's like you know. So so that's an option. It's like like it was really ever optional. Um, but, <laughs> but but no. Well, even so. So how much is the bear one thousand without that? Yeah, and even that is twice what we had hoped to do in the beginning. But to be honest, um, we didn't expect uh, to have to put the the disk operating system on it right away. Um, that's an interesting story. It's like, oh, so we're not a game machine. We're a personal computer. That means we really do need a disk operating system, and. And okay, we're under some schedule pressure, and that got pushed to the end, to the end, to the point where it's like, you know what, we're going to have to go outside and 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 acquire this if some, with some help. And so, so you know that Amiga DOS is written in BCPL. Oh my goodness! And so, and so pointers can be odd because they're pointers to 32-bit memory which means that they have to be shifted over by two before you can, and so just that whole Frankenstein interface. But um, for better or worse, we decided to go that way as opposed to spinning our own. In the end, which one would have been out there faster to water under the bridge? You know, that value of the decision, we made a decision, we worked, we ran with it. So, um, questions? Any questions from the home audience? <laughs> I guess, what, what was the biggest cost cutting decision going up to the 1,000? It wasn't the clock. Was there nothing? Was the memory? So memory was expensive. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, no. The problem with Steve's uh, Mac. They started with 128K and they couldn't do shit. So, um, <laughs> So, so, you know, I think that was just the, the biggest compromise. I mean, 
because, excuse me, because of the volumes we were working with, um, we weren't we weren't big, right? And and so yeah, it just it, everything cost too much, it, and we'd hoped that it would come down. You know, the 500 proved that you could cost reduce it. Right? The um, the designers of the Amiga 1000 weren't cost reduction wasn't our expertise. Okay, and. Um, and, and once you have something and then you decide how you can kind of refactor it to then make it, that's, that's, a, that's the, the easier second step to make. And so um, hats off to the, the Westchester engineering team for, for you know, coming up with ways to technologies that you wouldn't have considered in 1982 and 83 to then get the cost down in later years. You know, the the in, industry is 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 changing like gangbusters back then too, and so yeah. Um, How about uh, give us a sense of who was driving like the decision of who was thinking about what project? It sounded like it was organic, like you chose the like So was um, Bob Parsons, so kind of you said. So actually, so did he kind of tell no. I th I think I think what he did is he hired people to solve specific. So I wasn't there. That, I, I, just, I sometimes describe myself as the last of the first hires because um, there was hire, 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 and that last one was me, okay? And so there's summer and then fall, and then it was a while. It, it, there, was, there was a big gap before the next person came into that room. Um, and so I missed some of the early part, but I think, um, I, I think it was he hired people to 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 fill the roles that that he you know to to address the building blocks that were on the whiteboard, and he got those people. Did he come up with those blocks? That's what I'm trying to get. Who kind of decided those blocks? So was he an architect? I I I don't know because I wasn't there for that. So the, the problem with being the last of the first is so and so if you see an old video of me and it says Bob Kodiak Burns junk man. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's because that's kind of how I describe myself. It's like, you know, what big piece did you carve out for yourself, Bob? Well, it turns out people had carved out big pieces. The executive, the graphics, the sound. Um, intuition was kind of carved out later because it was, it, you know, we, we were originally a game machine, and so RJ was originally working on the game interface. Um, I'm going to forget somebody, and, and I apologize. And but but there's there's stuff there, the keyboard driver the printer driver the the Dale and I doing the same thing that we've done at, at HP with regards to how we divvied up graphics, um, uh, and so uh, in some ways I was kind of like running around filling in the gaps which you know as 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 as, as, as I, I I probably did the make file I often historically I have done things like that at companies I've been with and I don't remember that anything was different there That's, um the uh um as an as an older adult who had kids who were diagnosed with um afflictions that didn't exist in my day um, I look back and I go, yeah, yeah, I probably had ADHD yeah. too, and so and so that's a it's 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 appropriate for somebody that it's like yeah, do this, and if you get bored, do that, and if you get bored, do that, and so that's what I did. I just. How involved was Jim Miner, David Morse, Long Bob, on kind of defining those those areas? You know what I mean? Like, okay, so they so, came up with the original. So so Dave, Dave Morse Dave Morse really was the businessman. Right, so okay, kind of I did not I did not see him insert himself into technical discussions. Um, we, had, we had a business, a, 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 you know, Susie Chapstick, okay? Uh, uh, Susie Chapwick, I forget what her name was. Uh, she, she did advertisements for Chapstick. Um, she was a downhill ski person. And she did ads for us for the Joy Board, which was, you know, this Zen-like device that, 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 that um, that didn't that didn't break when you stepped on it back when you first bought it, but boy, if you still have one, I'm sure the plastic is is not gonna not gonna be making it for very long. Um, and so we had this whole business of, look, we're a company in the game industry making these contacts with distributors, and and so that's that's that side of 
Um, uh, the beauty about J minor is that, oh my goodness, I don't know if, if, if you understand, laying out chips by hand, I mean, hand taping the masks for it, it's like, that's old school, okay? That's really old school. It, <laughs> and, uh, and he had, um, um, he had people that, mentees, you know, he had younger people that were helping out. Um, and uh, Dave Needle in a video described an argument with, with Dale Luck about Bresnahem line drawing. But my recollection, because Dale and I talked about this before he, he then took it over to the hardware folks, because he and I had worked, so the, the, this algorithm on the HP thing had been uh, implemented in uh, four bit bit slice processors and, and Dale was quite familiar with that. Um, and so it, when he saw that, he went, wait a minute. I, I, and so it's like, oh, you know, so, um, so we talked about it. And I, I don't think he, I think he went straight to J. And, and so uh, Dave Needle was talking about the, um, the, the, the not wanting to do it thing, but the respect I have for Jay is, it's like, you know, here's this guy that, that really designed the whole thing. I mean, he brought it, but, and, and he went, oh, I can learn something new here. And he went, oh, yeah, oh. And, and so, um, uh, Needle describes it as a pulling teeth thing. I, my recollection of it is more like, wow. Yeah, we could do that, and 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 and, and, and am I oblivious of the fact that there was a deadline? Yeah, maybe. And so, but but um, but Jay was very um, open to learning new things. Yeah, it's like yeah. So that's. That's and, and that's and that's that's that sounds like an accurate yeah especially because it's first person as opposed to third person yeah yeah and, and that's my recollection too is is that um, and 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 you can imagine that Dale was ecstatic I was like you know because it's not often that the software guy gets to change the chip design yeah yeah and and and, and doing it knowing that he made it a lot better. It's like, now, instead of doing software line draw, I can just go here, draw that. And so the, the demos where it's going, Wah! it's like, yeah, he can do that now. So, um, and then there's this, so then that gets to the flood fill. Because, um, because when you have lines crossing each other and you're doing flood fills, there's this thing that you have to do some special magic to make sure that the last pixel doesn't either does or, or doesn't get rendered correctly so that it doesn't bleed out. And so uh, there's some voodoo associated with that that Dale had had some experience with with our work at Hewlett Packard. And it was not inaccurate to say that we were fearful of flood fill at the, at the launch because you know, you get that wrong. It's, it's a no. This one isn't. This one isn't a drawn. Isn't this is a digitized image? So you don't know. You can't trust that there isn't going to be a hole, right? Because it's it's whatever the camera decided it was going to be. Yeah, and you've seen those go wrong. <coughs> okay, you just turned it over and erased it. How did you keep the loads? becoming a problem? Was it because you were limited by the hardware, like memory and stuff, or was there a guy also saying, don't do proportional fonts right now, don't do... Oh, we always did proportional fonts. Right, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, no. Who was the guy um, that was I, I, um, I, I don't think that that was an institutional, I, I don't think bloat for features was an institutional um, concern. Bloat for memory was an institutional concern. And so, you know, what do you do? It's like, it's like 
and uh, over the course of my time at Commodore, huh, you've heard the story about the date, right? So, 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 th so, th so there's, there's this, okay, you compile and it doesn't fit. What are you going to do? And the answer was, wait. We'll, 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 no, no, we'll compile, no, we'll compile it tomorrow. Because it, because it was going from like, you know, um, sept, sept 30 to oct 1 in these headers of all these little things that got compiled in, okay? And, 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 and that's how close we were, okay? And so after, you know, after the date changed, um, we can now, it, it'll now fit. And, and we can get this release out, and then we can worry about trying to find this big. So, so yeah, there, were, there, were, there was refactoring that was done just for space reasons. And you're writing this, you know, a lot of it's in assembler, and, and you just look again and look again and look again. And just figure out how you can shave some space out. I don't remember any of the... Yeah, in my head I go, yeah, I remember there used to be, oh, I can do this, you know, and, and, and I don't remember those stories because it's been 30 years, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if you think back to your, you know, your old time, being at, you weren't there very long, were you? Well, so... Not the first team, it wasn't No, and so, and, and so here's my, to my dismay, remember I said it was the last of the first? And so I can tell this story because it's been more than seven years, and so um, the statute of limitations has expired, um, and so all the all the records have been shredded. But um, I was one of the only ones in that group that, when Commodore bought us, hadn't been there for a year. And the reason that was important is because the way they bought us was just this strange. The the way we're supposed to structure it is as an installment sale, where the date of the transaction is the date when they bought us. And then later we would get some of our money on the installment plan. And I'm sitting here going, so you want me to pay taxes on income that I don't have yet? Screw that. I, I, la, 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 la. And so, and so when I got stock from Commodore, I said, this is when I got stock from Commodore. I'll price it at the, at the, you know, the, the, the rate that, of conversion, and, but I'll treat it as if I got it then, and I'll sell it for long-term capital games as opposed to short-term. So, okay. <laughs> but, yeah. And so I was young. I didn't know any better. I was like, okay. Um, so note, um, from, the, from the birth of the Amiga to Commodore shutting down the West Coast Amiga was actually three and something years. It just wasn't very long. But even though they shut us down, I saw a lot of familiar faces doing contract work for Commodore. Um, uh, you know, in the in the in the time after that. So. Um, yeah, he did. Um, and in fact, um, in, in the way that he, he got me my first contract work with, with a with third party vendor, he probably was also helpful in getting me my last contract work um, for the CDTV, because I did some work um, on the CDTV, um, which is why there were um, some of those that, that got handed off yesterday. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it was hard for us because We really thought we'd done good, and we really wanted Commodore to succeed. And so, if you know, if they came back and said, "So, how about doing this?" Or, I think the CDTV, um, Carl was was an active proponent of that whole. Look, you, this is what you need to do. And uh, and gosh, I wish that had succeeded. One last question, though. Can you think back to that? So I, I probably shouldn't mention that uh, that we we convinced Sam Dicker that you should never cook fish in the microwave. <laughs> 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 
just remember, we're in this small thing. Okay, and right outside the door is the microwave. And oh my goodness. Uh, um, I don't, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have, I don't have a, a, a one highlight thing. Uh, that that trip to Lincoln Center was was pretty 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 awesome. Um, I had a uh, my um, I can't remember when the Monterey Developers Conference was, but I didn't actually officially go to it because um, uh, I was a, a young dad that uh, and yeah so. Um, but I, but I, kind of showed up at it so that I could show my new baby to the people that were at it. That was, it was family, you know. That was it, sometimes in your careers you work with people and they're good people, and a, but they're not family. This was family. You guys do the Lincoln show, you get this huge rollout. You got this fantastic piece of machinery and. Uh, between then and and when they're shipping, yes, the Amiga out, the, the one thousands going out the door. Yeah, maybe the five hundreds being worked on, or whatever. No, five hundreds later. But go ahead. Uh, you guys had this compared to what was available, MS DOS, Windows, whatever, one point oh or two. Was maybe a little a couple years later, but didn't you guys think that this was going to just take over everything? By God, yes. Wipe out there was there was a decade in my life, from 1985 to 1995. Okay, when I would say, really, we're not successful, and this is what we've got. Yeah, no, we're still course, we're point? still running event loops. Yeah. It's it's like what the. At what point did it, it become apparent to the team that Commodore wasn't going to get it done? That you guys weren't going to take over Apple and, and, and Microsoft. It wasn't going to happen where the Amiga was going to be the dominant. Because you started out as a game yeah, I, 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 then, then then Jay realized we have much more than. Yeah, I, I I I have to agree with you. And and so. Um, I don't know that, that there's a, a particular time when you can say, this is it. But I would think that the Amiga Wake, where, they, where that last third, it's like, oh, really? You don't even think you have something that you want to invest in here because we're not cheap enough. Because salaries in Silicon Valley are higher. They are. OK. But really, you're letting go of this group of, it's, it's like, no, you're, you're, now you're not serious. Now, now you're still thinking we've sold millions and millions and millions. We, the, there's a T-shirt that you could get at in Westchester that said um, Commodore um, uh, sells more computers than anybody, and it was true because um, they just sold them by the boatload. Unfortunately. That uh, whatever it is that had been let them be successful in doing that didn't translate over into a machine that honestly it wasn't until the second half of the 90s that I went you know what I admit it uh, 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 the Amiga trajectory it, it, it you know it's it, um, it's it's been eclipsed. Okay, um, uh, uh, people are, I, I can't, so Windows 3.1 still didn't do it for me. Windows 95 is like, okay, now we're starting to get to where um, I can see why people might like this better than what I had 10 years ago. Okay, remember? Because if you remember, the. The resolution of the Amiga image on an A1000 is pretty bad, okay? And so, um, and so, it, you know, it wasn't until then that I went, okay, I guess we're getting eclipsed now. But God, it took a decade for that to happen. And it's, and it's like, oh man, if, you know, if, if, 
if Ranger, which is the, the Amiga follow-on that was being developed in Los Gatos, you know, could we have been successful? I don't know, but, but, but if we're going to race to the bottom on, on price and, and price of talent, um, <laughs> no, earlier I said how much I respected you guys in, 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 at Commodore, so you guys know I'm not talking about you. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, they just they chopped the legs off up from underneath what could have been a great platform. So, and I regret that. That's that's been a sadness, but not you know I've moved on. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and so once again back to the empty box. I'm grateful that there are some people that that still have that sense of wow that was fun that was great and they get together and that because um, boy in the 80s we put way too much gold on the connectors. Okay, they've gotten to where they shave that down to you know and so so the stuff that I brought with me. That could probably be scrapped for a, a not small amount of money. You know, it's, it's, okay, but but I didn't have the heart to. I, I, that's why I was sitting in my garage. It's like I can't get rid of this. I can't get rid of it. And so again, b bless you for the empty box. I uh, I'm in no hurry to to drive home, so I'll be around. I thought you were going to fill up with the next five thousand. <laughs> I have. So, have you seen my five thousand? My, my no, my five hundred. Have you seen my five hundred? With the, with, oh, I mentioned that earlier. With the, with the chopped off top, so that we can get to the chip. Yeah. Okay, I mentioned that. And you're gonna have to, if if you have any feedback, because if I ever do one of these again, you should tell me which parts worked and which parts didn't. <laughs> no, that was good. Thanks, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm out here. It was, it, oh, thank you. Oh, oh, see, you guys are great. You brought it back to me. The, this, this thing, too. this thing, uh, this thing, I've, I've got more of these. I only have one of these. Hey, Bob, I'm going to mute you, okay? Okay. Uh, Thank you.